Let's now bring in Natalie Grivignac, who is a freelance journalist joining us live from Kiev. Uh, Natalie, thank you for your time today. Firstly, uh, tell me what is the very latest there in eastern Ukraine? Now, uh, we know that a state of emergency has been declared. Are people fleeing westward or are they standing their ground? Well, from uh, what I'm seeing in the social media and what I'm hearing from the people on the streets and from, you know, my personal mm. friends and relatives, people are remaining in Ukraine, yet they would love to protect their families and to um, make as, as escape plans or routes for their relatives, especially children, to move either to the western part of the country or uh, to fly to some other foreign countries. Yes, there, there, there is this discussion, but if, in my perception, it's a lot... All right, looks like we're having a little bit of trouble. Like 80% of people would remain interesting. Yeah. Sorry, you just froze for a little bit there, Natalie. I thought our connection had broken off. But, you know, I want to ask you, Vladimir Putin, he is demanding that Ukraine uh, recognise Russian sovereignty over Crimea. How likely is it that Kiev will do this? I think it's very doubtful because of all of the work that has been put in place uh, for the recognition that Crimea has been annexed uh, illegally and uh, that that is an annexation. That uh, so uh, the support and the uh, amount of actions that the Crimean Tatar community and the negotiations that Ukraine had had with Turkey and uh, all of these standing messages that Ukraine has been sending to the world that uh, Crimea was annexed. I think it's very unlikely that Ukraine would ever go for this. And, you know, he's also demanding that advanced weapons be removed. Uh, what compromise is there, if any? Can one be reached? Uh, well, as you know, as Golda Meir said, that we're living in our country, but somehow they want to kill us. So right now, Ukrainians uh, and the Ukrainian army is uh, bringing up all the reserve, which is actually an incredible reserve. More than a half a million of people are just a, a combatants. More than a uh, Ministry of Internal Affairs has people in Ukraine. So the, we are gathering our reserve, and it's very unlikely that we ever going to listen. We, we would need to protect our country for no further escalation to happen. And Natalie, fairly briefly, we've got one minute left, you know, tell me, how are Ukrainians feeling toward allies and the U.S.? Well, we are definitely very uh, thankful and grateful for all of the assistance and help and for all of the messages that are coming from, uh, from our allies. But unfortunately, uh, a lot of people here are thinking that sanctions would not be enough uh, in order to stop Putin. Uh, we are really asking for all of the allies to do the, you know, either something mm -hmm. like martial law to support Ukraine or to uh, protect us with more ammunition and more financial support, mm -hmm. for military support, not financial, military support. Because right now we really need to be prepared in order for no further attack to happen so so that it's hopefully hopefully on a diplomatic or on a uh, military basis but it will end uh, peacefully